Hey everybody and welcome to Making It Work, Supporting Students with Disabilities During Inclusive Math Instruction. My name is Laura Clark and I'll be sharing with you some of my favorite strategies. So our learning targets today are to use the Universal Design for Learning or UDL frame to support students with disabilities in math, including looking at some research-based strategies, Specially Designed Instruction, or SDI, the Supplementary Aids and Services, SAS, and Appropriate Accommodations and Modifications to use in inclusive classrooms. We'll take a quick look at some effective co-teaching models for math instruction, explore a few technologies, and hopefully you'll discover new resources and strategies that you can use in your classrooms tomorrow. Let's start with UDL, or Universal Design for Learning. When we think about UDL, I love this visual image, and I always think of UDL as the building blocks or the framework behind my instruction. UDL is bigger than just the words that I'm speaking, but it helps me to think through that my presentation or how I teach should be flexible and diverse, how the space is organized should meet student learning needs, it should be a supportive learning environment where students feel free to ask questions and to engage, there shouldn't be a lot of additional barriers between myself and students and content, and students should understand that accessibility means fairness for all students. Another way to think about UDL <coughs> are the three frames, representation, action and expression, and engagement. I think of these as the way that I provide instruction or teach. That should be multiple and varied. The way that students engage in learning should have lots of opportunities and variety, and the way students show me what they learned should also be varied to meet students' diverse learning needs. So how do we break that down? I want to make sure that students can engage, I teach, and assess in a variety of ways that are engaging, exciting, and interesting so students want to participate in what I want to share. Let's start with some research-based strategies for math instruction, focusing on specially designed instruction, or SDI, for students with disabilities. For lots of students, instruction in general can be incredibly stressful, and that in and of itself can be a learning barrier. So I always try and remember the first thing I want to do is make sure students are comfortable in my learning environment, comfortable with me as an instructor, and know that it's a safe place to ask questions, that all questions are welcomed, and all student input is valued. When we think about UDL and we think about IDEA, the federal law and the state laws that cover and support students with disabilities, keep in mind that no matter what our personal views are, the federal and state mandates for supporting students with disabilities are not options. There's no excusals. Um, it must be done according to law. So where can we start to find great resources to support, support students with disabilities? The Kentucky Department of Education website has excellent resources across all content areas and to support students with disabilities. I've shown you a quick screenshot here um, of the supports that they have for the Individual Education Program, or IEP, that governs all education for students with disabilities. Within this page, and if you do a quick search and look for the IEP and Lesson Plan Development Handbook, this guiding document has tons and tons and tons of very specific resources we can use to support students in math. Here is a look at the table of contents within the lesson plan handbook, and you'll notice that we've already got laid out for us what the state recommends as specially designed instruction and supplementary aids and services for all students with disabilities across the content areas. We also have a section focused on implementation and lesson planning. We're going to focus on some of the instructional methodologies that are recommended by KDE, as well as supplementary aids and services to support students in their learning. So one of the first methodologies that KDE recommends to support students in learning is direct instruction. So rather than have students explore different concepts and come up with a variety of wrong answers and incorrect learning, we want to start with explicit and direct instruction, that errorless learning. One way to think about direct instruction is looking at this laddered approach where we introduce the concept, setting the stage, 
Then we model the expected outcomes, being very clear, very explicit, giving examples. Then guide students through practice where we're ensuring that their learning is accurate. And then close that lesson by highlighting what we've learned, giving students an opportunities for independent practice without our support so that we can evaluate student progress. And of course, we know that the best models of teaching have evaluations scaffolded throughout through formative assessment at each phase of the instruction. Another research-based strategy recommended for supporting students in math is the concrete representational abstract instructional approach. Starting with this concrete approach where students manipulate hands-on concrete materials to look at a math concept, then transfer that to representational where they're doing some kind of drawing, observing, or looking at materials, but a flat approach. And then finally moving to that abstract or numbers and mathematical symbols to represent the concrete and that representational approach. Another recommended strategy for students with disabilities is providing multiple means for practice opportunities. So not just the same repeated worksheets over and over, um, but different ways to engage that should include the concrete and representational ways. Um, here's a quick image of some file folder games. We can do those at any level of learning. I'm also recommended our learning centers, games, whether those are games played in class, games using technology, any kind of rhythmic activities where students are learning um, rhymes and chants to help remember specific concepts in math, and then any reading materials that we have that can support the math concepts we're teaching. For many students in day-to-day -day instruction, simple strategies like think, pair, share help students to engage in the learning and turn learning from theory into concrete approaches. Um, here you'll see a quick shot of how one teacher has set up her math centers um, so that students across the week are engaging in that learning in an elementary setting. Using great video resources is another best practice. Khan Academy has tons of great math videos that most of us are already using in instruction. There are also lots of great virtual manipulative websites that are out there that we can use on smart boards, um, students can use at home on iPads with their computers. Creating your own teacher videos using a simple and free resource like the one I'm using today, Screencast-O-Matic, to record examples for students is another great way to engage our students in learning. If you haven't used the National Library of Virtual Manipulatives, it does a fantastic job of aligning content um, across the board with the virtual manipulatives that we can use to support student learning in our classrooms. Within the KDE document, there's this great table that reminds us that the keys to supporting students, all students, including those with disabilities, is to conduct multiple performance reviews where students understand what they are doing correctly so that they can transfer that knowledge forward, giving lots of opportunities for practice where students can engage and share what they've learned. I use a lot of flipped classroom model where students might watch a video on a concept outside of class and then in class they engage in independent practice where I can support students as they run into questions instead of teaching a lesson in class and then sending them out without my guidance and to do that independent practice where they might run into increased challenges. So depending on the math concept, sometimes it's best to teach that face-to-face. -face. Other times it might be best to share that information through a flipped classroom model, through videos outside of class, and then provide that practice opportunity with guided and scaffolded support in class. Helping students understand that we're working towards mastery, that not everything is about that one right answer, but about the right things students have done throughout the mathematical process, and giving meaningful supportive feedback are crucial for students with disabilities. In addition, providing those practice skills in a variety of contexts until students achieve that proficiency and fluency are crucial supports for students with disabilities. So to wrap it up, the key for all of our students is errorless learning, where students at least realize that answers can't be right, um, even if they're not always sure what the right answer is. When you're looking for fantastic resources, one of my favorite 
teacher resources is the teaching channel and this is one of my favorite videos it's called my favorite no and in my favorite no you see a fantastic teacher giving students feedback formatively at the very beginning of class where every student solves a problem she quickly goes through all the problems and then talks about her favorite no's meaning there was something good in the problem um, something that she really liked but there were also some problems in the solving and then she works through that problem as a class to let students have a chance to engage. In addition to the fact that I love the very meaningful feedback she gives, she does that anonymously so all students feel safe to participate in class. This is part of her normal routine so students understand um, the level of engagement and she gives students the opportunity to work through that problem solving process with her. So this is a fantastic opportunity um, for us to learn as teachers from another teacher's great teaching, and so I'd encourage you to check out my favorite no on the teaching channel. Supplementary aids and services are what students need to access content, and so those can be things like uh, manipulatives, a calculator, some kind of formula sheet, <clears throat> or all of the different kinds of resources that are listed here. Many of these are things we use every day in math instruction and those are supports that students with disabilities also need. They might need them more than other students um, but definitely all students benefit from using manipulatives in class. Let's talk a little bit more about SAS and SDI. Within the lesson plan handbook the state has broken down um, all the different areas where students might need support. In that document, on the left-hand column, they have specially designed instruction. Specially designed instruction, or SDI, is always what the teacher does. And for students with disabilities, the mandate is that initial instruction in specially designed instruction, or SDI, come from a special education teacher or the speech and language pathologist if they're speech goals. And then instruction after that initial instruction can happen both with a special education teacher and the general education teacher. So specially designed instruction is what the teacher does and then SAS is what the students need in their hands to access the curriculum. Often things that are specially uh, supplementary aids and services or SAS can also become SDI because students need to know how to use them. So for example here we see advanced organizers Advanced organizers can also end up in the specially designed instruction column as instruction in the use of advanced organizers. So for whatever tools that we give students to support their learning, we have to make sure that they know how to use that and we've taught that clearly. So often things that end up in the SDI column are instructing students in how to use SAS. I'm going to link a resource to this document. I've um, pulled out just the math components and made it a smaller document. I'll also give us a link to KDE so that you can access the entire lesson plan handbook. But as you go through, note that this is not an exhaustive list on either side, but are rather recommendations from the state to start our thinking process on what kind of supports students might need and what kind of instruction we can provide to increase student access. Sometimes people look at SAS or accommodations and modifications on testing as an unfair advantage. And so I wanted to share this graphic to just point out that we're not looking at um, that equality so much because equality is giving every student the exact same thing. And we can see quite clearly here that this student who is taller <laughs> the box is great, the student can see. For this student who is shorter with this exact same resource they can't see, but give this student an extra box to stand on and now everyone has the exact same view. It's the same thing with SAS um, and SDI. It's giving students the exact same opportunity to see or to engage in the learning. So sometimes adults in classrooms might make these calls about students who are in our classroom and we might hear comments around you know, about a student in my class, he's a bad kid, he's just lazy, he's unmotivated, unwilling to try. And I'd encourage us to think in a slightly different way. For all students, motivation can be the great unknown. And for any of us, if 
a topic or a subject like math, like language arts, 